Hey everyone, my name is Jay Elborn, and I'm the lead programmer on an exciting new cooperative multiplayer game called Crete. And this video is a part of a series giving you a glimpse into our thought process while actively developing a game prototype using Epic's Unreal Engine. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a really small but cool feature where we can spawn different characters for the different players in our multiplayer game. Now, our solution is only taking two characters, but I'm sure you can take what we're going to learn in this video and expand it to fit your game. All right, let's look at this from a blueprint point of view, if you might implement it, uh, you know, just from the first stab at it. So all I've done is I have a standard project and I have these three third person characters. I just duplicated the default one, changed the materials on them. So let's jump into the level editor blueprint and the level blueprint, I should say, and create three variables. First is the first pawn, the second pawn, and then we're gonna have a, a current pawn. So the first and second are gonna be character class references. And the third current pawn is going to be a pawn object reference. So we're going to start with the begin play and we're going to make an array out of the first and second pawns that we're setting as variables. And then we'll just choose a random one from that. And that's going to be our random actor that we're going to spawn into the world. Now the location we're just going to get from the player character in the world and then get its transform and stick that right into the spawn actor. Next thing we're gonna do is just make sure that we have a valid actor coming out of the spawn actor, and then we can get going with the rest of our code. We're gonna start with getting the player controller, and then from there, we're gonna get the current pawn uh, that's being controlled. We'll store that in our current pawn uh, variable that we created earlier. Then we're going to unprocess from the current pawn, and then we're going to check if that pawn that we received is valid, and then we're going to destroy that pawn. And then we only have one step left, which is to possess the brand new uh, actor that we just created. So we'll drag off the controller again, use the possess node, and then we'll drag in our actor that we uh, spawned into the world. And there you have it. So we have a very basic set of blueprint nodes here that will get a random actor, spawn it, then it's going to uh, find the current pawn, store it before it unpossesses, destroys, and then we possess the new pawn. So that's essentially everything that we're doing. So we're going to set the variables for our two different blue and red pawns, and then we'll test it out. As you can see, we have a working uh, situation where every once in a while it chooses the same blue one, but we will have a random selection between blue and red. Now the issue comes when you go to do this in multiplayer. As you can see, we set this to multiplayer, two players at a time, uh, playing from the client. And you can see we have two gray pawns here. Now the two gray pawns are what the server spawned for us. Uh, it spawned a player one and a player two, and then replicated that to all the clients. Now the clients themselves also spawn the blue and the red pawn. So we, you can see we have an issue here. So we're gonna have to actually modify the code to take in the replication, the RPC, so knowing what the server's doing, know what the client's doing. And we also have errors that come up just that just has the server not recognizing some of the stuff that we're looking for. But I would like to show you another way that we can implement this and work a little bit better with the flow of Unreal Engine. More specifically, how the framework is designed to work. As you may notice from the previous implementation, we are spawning two pawns. One as soon as the game begins from the framework, and then another one from us by choosing the one that we want to use and replacing the default one. Let's try and spawn the correct pawn at the very beginning. That's our sort of goal with the next step here. The first thing we want to do when implementing this feature is understand how the Unreal Engine framework currently spawns our players at the start of the game. You may remember from setting up previous projects or the game you're working on, you will set a default pawn in the game mode from the editor. When you change that property, you get the different starting pawns. Unfortunately, this only works with one pawn, not for setting up multiple different pawns for something like a multiplayer game where you want different characters in that type of a setup. So let's dive into the game mode base and look a little further and see where this actually occurs for the default setup. And we're going to run a find command and we're looking for the word default pawn. I am interested in one of these results as I look through them. It's a function call get default pawn class for controller. Now it's going to give us back a U class 
which is going to be our actor, and it's taking in a controller. This is where the controller, when it's created, asks what pawn it should spawn. What is uh, amazing about this, and what we would really want to do, is just override this function in our own game mode class. But at first glance here, we can see that the function declaration here is not virtual, which means we can't really override it, which is a shame. And I think when people try to implement this solution or this feature, this is a hurdle that comes up where uh, in previous versions of Unreal, this was a virtual class, and then it was removed, I think around 4.18, um, don't quote me on that, and a lot of people felt that it broke their games. But it really didn't, and let me explain what we have to do. In this function, we can see that there is a Unreal Engine reflection system being used. There's this Unreal Engine function called uFunction, that's being called and passed some parameters. And one of the parameters is very interesting to us. It's the blueprint native event, which means that this function can be overridden by a blueprint and have a default native implementation. So this is designed to be overridden in blueprints, which means that it's good luck for us because we can override it as well. Uh, one thing you have to look for when that happens is an underscore implementation after. So you'll have to override a function called, uh, let's see, get default pawn class for controller underscore implementation. That's what we should be looking for. So let's head over to the CPP file and see if we can find that. But, but let's take a look at what this function actually does and see if it's useful to us, because maybe it's not even going to work for our situation. It's called and it returns the default pawn class. All right, there's two return statements. There's one that returns the static class of a default pawn, and then there's another one that just returns the default pawn class. So essentially, all it's doing is returning the pawn that, that we should be spawning, which is perfect because that's what we want to do. We want this function to be called and we want to return a pawn that we specify. Now that we know where we can set our starting pawn, we have a plan of attack. Let's implement that plan by creating our own game mode class. The first thing we want to declare in our game mode header file is the function we're overriding. So we'll create this line in here that just says virtual u class get default pawn class for controller underscore implementation. We'll pass in the parameters of a controller and then we'll uh, override that from the parent class. The next thing we want to do is set up some properties to store the various pawns that we wish to spawn. So we started this whole feature saying that we're going to have two different characters that when the players join the game, we want each player to have a separate pawn. Side note, I'm going to code a very simple flip-flop between these two character types. If your game has many more characters than two and you wish, this property could be a list of character types. And instead of a flip-flop, you could come up with a way or a better system to select the current character. For this video, we're going to keep it simple and just do this setup that we're using in Crete. The last property that we want to add to our header file is a property to store the current pawn selection. Now, it's going to look like this. It's going to be the U property. And we're going to have a, a parameter in here called replicated. Now this is just going to be another T subclass of a character and we'll give it a name current pawn to assign. Because we're a multiplayer game, I want to make sure that all players know which pawn was the last or current one selected. So in the Unreal Reflection function U property, we tell it that this property is replicated and should be the same one on all clients and servers. That's it for the header file. So let's jump over to the CPP file and create our function definitions. The first thing we will do is finish our replication of the current pawn to assign property. This is simple and we just need to add this function. It's the get lifetime replicated props function. And anytime you wanna replicate any properties on a class, you have to include this function. We're going to do a do rep lifetime and we're gonna have it we're going to pass in our class name, in this case, game mode, and we're going to pass the property on this class that we want to replicate. In this case, current pawn to assign. Now, one thing to note, if you want to use the do rep lifetime, 
what we want to do is include at the top of our file an include statement for net slash unreal network dot h. Now the final thing we're going to do is actually override our get default pawn class for controller. So let's explain this overridden function. Instead of returning just the default pawn, what we're going to be doing is a flip-flop between the two pawn properties that we set up ourselves in our custom game mode. Whichever one is picked, the player controller will use. So let's take a look at the code real quick. First thing we're going to do is look if the current pawn to assign, now remember that's the property that we're keeping track of the current selected pawn, and that's the one that's replicated to all the clients in the server. We're going to check if that has been set yet, so meaning that there's already been a controller, a player controller asking for a pawn and, and, and set it. So if there was nothing set at this moment, then we're going to go down to the else statement. And what we're going to do is just make sure by checking if the first pawn and second pawn properties have been set, that they're not null pointers. If that's the case, then we're going to determine a current pawn to assign by doing a random function that's going to select the value between zero and one. And we're going to check if the random value that it produces is equal to zero. Now, if that is the case, it's going to return and assign the first pawn. Now, if the random number produces uh, the number one, then it's going to select the second pawn. Once that has occurred, it returns the value to the controller, and that is what is spawned into the game. Now, let's say the next controller calls this function, and it goes up and says, is the current pawn to assign been assigned yet? Is there a value there? Because this is replicated, it will know that the last player controller actually did assign something to there. So it's going to say, yes, there was something assigned. Then we say, if the first pawn and the second pawn are both valid, again, we check this just to make sure. Then what we do is we check to see if the current pawn was assigned to the first pawn. If it was, we'll assign it to the second pawn. And then vice versa, else, we'll assign it to the first pawn if it was previously assigned to the second pawn. And that's that flip-flop motion. And once it's completed that, we just return the current pawn to assign, just like we did before. The controller then knows which one to spawn into the game. That's pretty much all the code that's needed to do this. All we really did as a recap, we overrode the get default pawn class for controller underscore implementation from the game mode base into our own custom game mode class. To make our function work the way that we wanted to, we just needed a few properties that we created, two for the different types of um, characters we want to spawn, and one to just to keep track of the last one that was spawned. Now, the implementation of how you actually select your characters is up to you. There's many different ways you can do it. This is a very, very basic, pretty hard-coded example of us just manually setting the two different options and then randomly picking one or the other. So it's a fairly basic solution to this. But the main chunk of code that I wanted to illustrate here was the fact that we're doing it within the framework of Unreal. We're doing it in the game mode where it's typically decided what the default pawn is when the game starts. And that's where we want to tell it what to use. So let's test it out by first setting our level to use the custom game mode that we created. And then we're going to set our pawn properties on the game mode, you know, those two variations of the character that we want to set. And then we're going to set our game to actually play as a multiplayer game with two players. So we can actually see the different games, the different characters, and then we can hit play. And now we can see that we have two different characters running around. And if we sort of redid this action and hit play again, you'd see that we could get two different setups or maybe the same. There's only two variations, so it's it's very common to get the same character multiple times. If you give it enough tries, you'll see that you'll have various characters as you go through it. Well, we have achieved what we set out to achieve. We have it picking different characters by overriding the proper functions in the Unreal Engine framework. I do hope you have enjoyed this content, and if you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Leave a comment if you have ideas for other Unreal how-to content, and make sure to check out the development of Crete, details in the description.